This is Julian, and welcome to the fourth and final preview video of my new live event, Transformation Mastery Live. Let it all out! Let it out until there's nothing more to let out! What I want to share with you here are some of the realizations, some of the epiphanies, and some of the life-changing experiences that the people who've attended have had. Okay, and honestly here, this is really what keeps me going. Um, this is why I do what I do, um, and this is how I knew that I was onto something big. And you'll see it with what these people are sharing here. Um, this is not the result of surface level work. This is not the result of, oh, I learned a couple cool little tips and tricks here and there. You will see in these people that something changed and was ignited in them at the fucking core. And honestly, I get the fucking chills every time I see this, every time I witness it. Um, this is what changing lives fucking looks like. If we're related, we'll meet. So today I feel like I've, I've, I've met my family and everybody else here has also, so. <laughs> that meditation was really fucking intense for me. Um, like just thinking back to my childhood, I realized that like there's three people that I'm just so angry at and that I just need to forgive. Um, and like I grew up in like a really like loveless household because everybody was just so angry at each other. So like when it came time for me to like, when I hit puberty and like when I was trying to find girlfriends and stuff, I'd go for the girls that like just would fucking put me down and like reject me so much because I was recreating the pattern. So I realized that like that pattern that they created in this loveless household or what it felt like were patterns that I was just recreating my whole fucking life. I tried really everything. I tried, uh, you know, and, 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 um in high school, I was always the skinny kid, so I, I started lifting. I thought when I when I was uh, when I'm being the big guy, I would uh, get happy, get the girls. Obviously, uh, it was not the case. <laughs> and I, I thought uh, I, need, I need I need to learn how to fight. I, I want to be a tough guy, you know. Then I get all the girls, and you know I get count confident. I did some MMA. Uh, not happy, and uh, actually more unhappy. And uh, then I I fell into a depression uh, last year. I uh, I started with the pickup thing. Uh, give me some some highs, like you said. I was uh, when I approached the first time a girl in daytime. It was like uh, I always thought when I do this, you know, I, I will be the king. You know, I did this and I, 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 I felt really, really good, but it goes away. And uh, I did some more crazy shit, and uh, and, and I've been with some some be beautiful girls, and uh, I, I thought I still can be happy. And, and yeah, then the transformation mastery came out, uh, and I didn't hesitate, and uh, I really thought this can finally release me from all this shit, and uh, I think it did. I always tried to be perfect just for my father. Which I can't be. I never will. Because I am as I am. And I am for me and not for my father. Thank you. Today, I first time in my lo life I um, let let loose of this, this mask I was wearing my whole life. I was like always trying to be like the cool dude and not show emotions or something. I think it's because like as I was a kid I always was like seeking attention from my parents but I never really got it and so I got angry and like started fighting each people and like did more negative stuff just to get this attention and it's getting further and further and at some point it ended in drugs and alcohol but it, I never like really got this feeling like I was loved or somebody was there for me and I really feel like I was always alone my whole life. And yeah, today I said, um, I felt like I really get, could accept it, that, it's, that I'm not alone. It's like, it's, it came for me that I couldn't open up to other people and that was the reason because other people couldn't open up to me. And it's like, I feel like I, I finally can accept being loved and love others that I couldn't do my whole life. I forgot about it until we were talking, digging deep into our subconscious because it just 
dug at me. He said, uh, his exact logic was, you get C's, you're not getting into college. You don't get into college, you don't get a good job. You don't get a good job, you're not going to have any money. You don't have any money, no one's going to care about you. No one cares about you, no one loves you, no one loves you, you die alone. <laughs> yeah, I was 15 when I got told this by my dad, who I thought was perfect. And I wanted to be just like him, so hearing that kind of destroys your self-confidence. So I lived the rest of my life thinking that I, uh, I didn't deserve anything. So you know, and he never he never followed that up with saying, "But you're different. You can change this." He said, "If you don't do that, that's your life." And until then, when we were talking, when Julian said at one point, maybe he didn't know any better. I I had never thought about that because. I, he never told me about his life at all, and one day I found out through a friend of his that he knew growing up that I saw at a bar one day, he told me that his dad was physically abusive, and the fact that I never knew that and that him taking that aspect away from our relationship made me realize that he didn't know any better, and that was him trying to be the best he could, and it just broke down a wall for me that I never understood. My dad was very distant with me and never gave me any sex talks or any talks about being a man and like taking responsibility for your actions. It was just whenever I wasn't <coughs> doing something that was manlier or like masculine, I was shamed and like, like thrown around for it and like sent home, like you know, just like my dad would look at me like I'm a piece of shit, like bitch, basically like, oh you're like you're showing female like fucking attributes you're a bitch or something like that like it wasn't like this is what you do is this is what you don't do and then that just stuck with me my whole life it became wanting to shape my body so I looked more manly and masculine uh, the way that I dress the, the, the tonality of my voice and the relationships I formed I wanted people to be beneath me because I thought that, that was masculinity and it led to me not being able to open up with girls at all which is ironic because you'd think that being a man would lead to being with a woman but it was like if you can't get in touch with your your softer feminine sides, you can't relax enough to like have a sexual experience with a girl. I got this weird sense of like, I've always been the man that I'm destined to be, and I don't really need anyone to tell me what that is or how to be that. And it just like made me like laugh. Like I felt like, like my posture straightened up and my head just like went up on its own. And I was just like, like I am what I need to be. And then no like, no like media portrayal or what my dad's image of a man is ever gonna fit into that, but I'm okay with that. And then I was just laughing, like, I just felt so fucking powerful. I felt like the leader of a tribe or like a warrior, like it's a primal feeling. I guess the reoccurring theme in my life is that like people really don't like accept me or like like me. I mean, my siblings never really liked me. Um, like no one from my family apart from my mother like really ever liked me because basically my, my whole family like hated my mother. I never really had like companionship in school. like. Especially in elementary school, I was bullied. I really didn't have many friends. And in middle school, like, um, I had switched middle schools in areas, like, from a totally different area. And, like, I made this decision in middle school and in high school just to, like, not talk. And I was just known as, like, the silent dude. And I felt like that just gave me some sense of, like, relief, saying in a sense that I didn't have to make friends because, you know, I, I didn't feel like it. I told myself, well, I wasn't good enough to make friends, so I just decided not to talk. And, and then I and I always noticed every time I did try to make an impression on someone or I did try to make friends, it, it never really worked out. And I feel like it all goes back to like the reoccurring theme and I feel like I don't present myself fully to others. And in a sense, I'm just not like really showing myself and then like all these thoughts were just in a cloud during the experience and I just realized that like none of this really matters like at the end of the day I'm human and at the end of the day I'm not perfect and I also realized that everyone else is human and that you know we're social creatures and in that we're creatures like we're on this planet in the middle of the galaxy like it actually put a lot of things in perspective for me so now I'm just I just feel like a weight's been lifted off my shoulders like I don't have to care about things that don't matter anymore. I realized something about myself today that I had never like even thought about and I kind of I feel like I was put it, pushing it all behind until this moment and uh, so when we were going through the whole process of like breathing and feeling you know the deep 
things that were happening inside. I kind of uh, started thinking about my childhood and why nowadays, like I feel really unconfident and not able to approach or do things like talk to people randomly, like in the street or just have conversations just like all my other friends. And I finally realized that I was really afraid. I was afraid to put myself out there because as a child, I realized that my parents would be fighting a lot. And I noticed that I was the one that would, you know, try to intervene between their conflict. And I was trying, I was always the person who would, you know, uh, try to fix what was what was wrong between them. And their fighting would escalate. I would try to, fi I would try to f uh, fix it on my own as a little kid growing up. And it was just terrifying for me. I just, I hated conflict. And uh, afterwards, my brother, he w he's older than me, and he would try to fix the conflict. And he would end up getting into fights with my dad. And I would try to intervene between their conflict. So I was always in between some kind of critical fighting or some kind of, uh, you know, abuse. And I would just try to like solve issues that weren't mine, but I would still try to try to find the, the right way to solve these issues. But, um, I think that kind of changed who I was in the future because now I don't, I try to avoid conflict and with people that I really care about, I, I can't tell them the truth about what I'm thinking. So if I, if I think, oh, this might create some kind of conflict with them, then I avoid it. But now I feel like I could pretty much express myself the way I want to. And I don't feel that need to try to please people anymore, or try to have everyone happy and keep everyone happy because I'm just myself now. Now I could truly express myself for who I am and I don't feel like I need, I, I don't think that there's anything holding me back any more from that. When my family tells me that they love me, I'm not able to tell tell them that I love them back. And I've never been able to figure out why I'm so emotionally blocked. So I kind of developed this cool front that, oh, I'm the cool guy that no one can affect. You know, like you can't make me angry, you can't make me pissed. And I've been running that show for like many years now where, where, people, where when I do once in a while get angry, like, oh my God, this guy's emotions. Like I do feel everything, but I just cannot express it to people. And I kind of realized that because I had all these experiences. My, my, my childhood was pretty amazing, but like just on a more subtle level, I was a weak guy. I kind of closed myself off completely. And I, in a way, overcompensated. So, you know, like I fucking became the best at academics, best job, just overlearned everything and everything. Like, you know, like the surface level was on point. Like, you know, like all my friends are like, this guy is the best shit ever. But like within, it's just like so close, you know? Um, and I mean, I just could not figure out subconsciously like what was going on, but like, it kind of, I had this moment during the session where it's like, I imagined myself as a baby and just like gave myself a hug. I was like, it's all right, man, just let it go. And, and that was kind of the moment for me. I was uh, mad at me for just being a coward and not when things went wrong, when these bullies were there or whatever. Why didn't you stand up? Why didn't you just be brave? And uh, what hit me is, uh, you know, with my son and his cowardice, I realized, like, I'm trying so hard, I'm hard on him like this because I so don't want him to turn into me. And yet, in doing that, I'm turning him into me. So uh, that was eye-opening. And that was probably the big value thing I did not expect to take out of this. This is my second time here. The first time was in San Francisco. Um, and in San Francisco, I didn't really feel anything during the guided release. However, today I did feel something. Like, I've always been afraid of failure because growing up, I was shamed whenever I failed. And so I realized that I never really put my best self forward just so that would give me an excuse to fail. It was like, oh, I failed, but I didn't really try. And I've been doing this throughout my life. Just not because I hate success, but because I'm afraid of failing even more. And another thing I realized was because I was like picked on uh, as a kid, like I had this facade where I wouldn't really let myself feel any emotions. And so I like shoved all of that deep down inside. And that's why I couldn't really feel anything during the last guided release in San Francisco because I wouldn't let myself feel. Like the resistance was just too much. 
However, today I, I found a slight tear in that shield. Like I got a small peek into what's inside. And holy shit, there's a lot there. <laughs> it's like it's like a lot of stuff waiting to come out. And weirdly enough, even though I'm afraid of what I'm gonna find down there, I'm kind of excited. I want to see what's there. I want to let it out. You know, I want to I want to feel what I truly am. And uh, you'll be seeing me at a lot more of these TM programs. <laughs> yeah. I want to talk a little bit about probably the most beautiful thing I have experienced as a human being. Um, so I have this sister whom I've, ever since I was little, confide everything to, and we're probably the closest uh, people in my entire family, and I've loved her forever, and we're really close. Um, and in high school, uh, when I was younger, I feel like people always put me in a box. They're like, oh yeah, you're that shy kid that really doesn't get in trouble, and you're like the good kid, like doesn't really get good with girls, you're just like in the corner. Um, so when I grew up, I was like, fuck this, fuck you guys. Like I could show you, I could be like badass and I could get into trouble and I could do stupid shit. So in high school, I just went on a bit of a rampage and it was really, really destructive for a while. Um, and toward my senior year, um, well, those four years of my high school experience, I went to a different school every year because I got kicked out just every single year. Um, and the last time was really, really bad and uh, I ended up going to a mental hospital. I ended up getting arrested and then getting thrown in a mental hospital for two weeks, and my family just didn't know what the hell was going on. Uh, my sister was, um, was going through a lot with me, and she just didn't know what was going on with me. Um, and I couldn't believe how, like, just the simple thing of the people putting you in a box could control your entire life. Um, so when I was in the hospital for two weeks, it was, it was horrible. I know it was only two weeks, but it felt like two years. Um, my family still visited me and everything, but um, I didn't really get to see my sister much. And uh, at the end of those two weeks, it was getting near Christmas. So my family came to the mental hospital and they were uh, like asking him like, hey, could you release him? Like, it's gonna be Christmas, like he's fine or whatever. And then uh, my grandparents showed so much love for me that the staff there, um, they called me in and they're like, look, we're gonna release you, but only because we see you have such a great support system and like people that are gonna love you and like people you could talk to you if you get out. Um, and then I got released, but they didn't tell my sister that I got released until I came home. They were gonna keep it as a surprise and she didn't wanna go with them um, to find out because if they said no and I had to stay there, she would have been crushed. So she was waiting at the house just to see what happened. and. Um, on the way to back to my house, uh, my grandparents, they, uh, they told me like, hey, just, just keep it a surprise, just leave it, just uh, like stay outside, we'll, I'm gonna go in and then I'm gonna tell her that you couldn't be released and then we're gonna surprise her by you walking in. And um, I'm like, yeah, that sounds awesome, let's do it. Um, so my, grandpa, my grandma, she walked in the house and then my sister heard the door open and she just ran upstairs like, um, and then uh, I could tell um, she was just like, what, what, what's going on, what's going on? Did he, did he get released? And then they told her like, uh, my grandma, she's like a really good actress. She was like, no, she couldn't get released. I'm so sorry, I know you really wanted to see him. And then, um, <laughs> and then I could just feel the, the disappointment in my sister. Like, uh, and um, I just, I couldn't take it. I, I walked into the living room and that moment when I saw my sister's eyes <laughs> look at me like we haven't seen each other in years, um, that whole facade that I've been putting up that whole time I was in high school that I've been trying to build uh, just for my ego just completely just got shattered and I was like a little kid again and I, um, I ran up and I hugged my sister and that was probably the purest moment of my entire life and uh, I'll never forget that and I feel like that is um, like a little bit of what I felt here. and. Um, yeah, I just can't wait to have more experiences like that. Yeah, it's this part of the event where, uh, you know, you just kind of realize, like, on one hand, how outside of, say, an environment like this, we just keep this to ourselves and just stuff it down all the time. How in society, too, there really is no environments where you can put yourself out there like this. And it also shows how when there is an, o an opening or an opportunity where you can, for example, share your story and express it, where you're allowed to feel how it just all comes fucking rushing out. You know, it's like we're so in need of this, you know, this more like accepting, empathetic approach versus all hiding and putting on this front and pretending like everything's okay. So this is Transformation Mastery Live. If you'd like to attend, click the link below, reserve your spot, and uh, 
I'll see you there. If we're related, we'll meet. So today I feel like I've, I've, I've met my family and everybody else here has also. It's just amazing that something like this exists, that people can share with each other um, what they feel. Ah! All the time I felt like it was there was something missing. I really feel like I'm just addressed all these problems that have been like sitting inside of me. He's given me and everyone else in the room today tools to really let go of the baggage that you accumulate throughout your life. I've been hanging around with people for two years. I have like a stronger connection to some of you right now than I have with them. Now I'm sure that this is the right path.